Hey everyone, I'm Richard Byrne from freetechforteachers.com and today I'm joined by Carl who is the founder of a very popular app called Seesaw, which many of you I know love and use. Uh, Carl, can you tell us a little bit about how you got the idea for Seesaw and you've also made some other products that people really like in the ed tech space, so uh, what, what were those as well? Uh, sure. Hi, hi everyone. Um, so, uh, CISO was started by myself and uh, Adrian Graham. Uh, we both worked at both Google and Facebook and built some products uh, like Google Calendar and Google Photos and worked on Facebook Newsfeed and the Facebook mobile apps. Uh, so we've we've done a few things in the technology world. Um, interestingly, the the story of Seesaw really comes though from uh, feedback we heard from teachers about a previous product that we've built. Uh, both Adrian and I uh, have had a lifelong interest in education and technology. Adrian's mom was an uh, elementary art teacher. I was like a teaching assistant in college and taught night classes after I graduated. But we're not teachers. And our first product that we built, uh, some of you may know called Shadow Puppet, was a simple tool for using photos and your voice to tell the story. And we launched that uh, not really thinking necessarily that it would be used in schools. We launched it in a way that everybody can use. But it turned out that it was really popular among kids in schools. It really empowered kids to get what was in their head out in a form that other people could see. They could talk about their art or talk about a science project or give a little presentation. And as a result of that experience, we got to know a lot of teachers. We were really intrigued by the fact that it was used a lot in schools and kept hearing about a lot of the same problems. You know, I've got all these iPads or Chromebooks in the classroom, how do I collect stuff off of it? How do I, you know, we hear these horrible stories about plugging iPads into your computer and uploading videos to YouTube and cut and paste and embed code into Blogger and send an email to parents. Um, and, and so we were like, hmm, this seems like something we could solve. How could we take what we learn from Shadow Puppet about uh, giving kids creative tools that really let them get their ideas out into the world, but put that into a format where it's all organized in one place for teachers and really easy to share with parents so that parents get visibility into what their kids are doing at school. Yeah. So, and just to point out that Shadow Puppet is still available in the App Store. You can still get it uh, and Absolutely. you can still use it. And uh, in fact, I just showed it to, to some teachers in Alabama just uh, last week, actually. So uh, it's, it's still there. You can, you can still use it. Uh, but when I, saw, when I saw Seesaw, and I think I saw it, Probably the Jan it was it January two thousand fifteen that it launched. Uh, right. I, was, I was actually at a I was at a conference and I, someone said, "Hey, have you seen this yet?" And I was like, "No, but let's check it out." And uh, it was it's it's just taken off from there. I mean, I, I think I wrote a blog post about it the, the day that I saw the day that I saw it and tried it and wrote a blog post about it and in the last two and a half almost three years now it, it's really it's really expanded uh, and you have. You know, users using it on iPads, on Chromebooks, on on every device you can think of. Uh, you even have a, a Kindle Fire app, if I'm not you do, yeah. right. Uh, the you're one of the, not accessible anywhere. Yeah, you you know, you're one of the few few ed tech companies that actually promote something for Kindle Fire. Uh, you know, so it, it works everywhere. Uh, so that gives you kind of a unique perspective, I think, on the portfolio process and what people are doing. Uh, you know. What do you see that parents really want in a portfolio that, that their kids are making? Well, so, you know, I think there, there are sort of two sides to the student-parent interaction on the portfolio. I think, you know, parents are used to a world in which they have information about almost anything at any moment of the day. You know, you get a, I joke, I, I know more about my Amazon deliveries than about what my kids do in school, which seems like a pretty bizarre uh, inversion of priorities. You know, I send my kids to school for eight hours a day. I want to be informed about what questions I should ask, how I can support their learning. I want to know how they're doing. So if there are things that I should get involved with or talk to their teacher about, I can do that early and not wait for the parent-teacher conference. And so, you know, I think parents are just hungry in general for like more information about what their kids are doing and making so that they, and learning hopefully, so that they can have a conversation uh, to support that learning. I think the, the flip side of it though is on the student side and, and 
honestly, I think, you know, even though I'm a parent, one of the things I'm most excited about is the feedback we hear from teachers about how CESA has changed how their students perceive school. And, and I think, you know, there, there are really two pieces to, to the portfolio from a student's perspective. I think one is just having a place where their work uh, is saved over time and they have access to it is really powerful. Um, you know, best case, most things that students produce in school go on a shelf in a back room somewhere. Worst case, they go in the trash. <laughs> and I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm not kidding. Yeah, no, it's true. It's not, true. I mean, work. yeah. <laughs> um, and you know, like, how would you feel if most of your work went in the trash? What signals are we sending to you about how important that is or how hard you should try or how valuable it is? And so, you know, just by keeping that work around and giving students the opportunity to like really see their progress, to be excited about what they've done, to be able to go back and tell stories about it or, or do the sort of uh, reflection and metacognition around, around it, excuse me, um, I think is really powerful. But then on the, the sort of student parent interaction side, to come back to your question, sorry, uh, is I think, you know, there's a very natural tendency uh, a very innate human thing, I think, that when you're on stage in front of people, when you have an audience for your work, you know, you, you stand up a little straighter, you like try a little harder, you, right. you want to do your best. And uh, one of the things that we've heard from teachers is that, you know, kids really, you know, will like, they'll want to redo some work that they put into Seesaw because they're like, oh, you know, my parents are going to see this or ask me questions about it or my peers for older kids. Um, and having that sense of audience as a motivation to try hard, I think is is really, really powerful. Yeah, uh, and, and I, I totally agree with you. And I think that's uh, that's one of the reasons that, that I love the fact that in Seesaw, your, your students can put, you know, whatever they decide is their best work, right? Absolutely. Doesn't, doesn't, a portfolio isn't necessarily okay, all 25 kids did their homework, let's put that all in there. No, it, it's the kids picking, this is what I'm proud of, and this is what I want to show off, uh, which we'll, we'll leave it to the last question. We'll kind of wrap it up with this. Uh, so last year, you introduced a blogging function in Seesaw. Uh, so th some people might, might see there's a little bit of overlap between Seesaw as a portfolio and Seesaw as a blogging platform. But I, I don't quite see it that way. I think there's a, there's a place for both. Uh, what are you seeing in terms of how teachers and, and students are using the, the blogging function? Yeah, so I, I think blogs are kind of interesting in classrooms in that it's a catch-all term or even a catch-all piece of technology to solve a bunch of different needs. Um, a lot of classrooms use the blog primarily as a tool to communicate with parents. And, you know, that's everything from classroom announcements to, you know, stuff that's more about, like, what the kids are actually making and doing at school. And quite frankly, I think if your audience is parents, blogs are a pretty poor tool for communicating with them. They're not easy to access on mobile devices. They're not personalized in any way. They're, you know, the email about some new blog post gets mixed in with everything else. If there's a password on it, the parents forget it. It's kind of complicated. And so... You know, I think a, a sort of mobile app like Seesaw that parents subscribe to, that they get notifications about, that, you know, they see when their own child adds something is much more effective for parent communication. Um, the reason why we added the blog is because, you know, we started with that parent communication focus is that uh, we heard feedback from a lot of teachers who had switched to Seesaw from their previous blog, that it was working much better for the parent communication, but they missed the sense of public audience, that they wanted to give their kids an opportunity to connect with other classrooms or you know, an author of a book that they were reading, and that opportunity to publish some student work more publicly beyond the parent audience was really valuable. And so that's really what the Seesaw blog is about. It's about taking the student work in their portfolio and publishing it to a broader audience. Um, and for that, I think it's worked really well. You know, we have um, you also have the ability in the, the product for classrooms to subscribe to other blogs. And so you can have kind of pen pal classrooms. You can encourage students to comment on each other's work, which is a great digital citizenship teaching opportunity as well. Um, that piece has, has worked really well. I think some people use a blog as a like uh, classroom website where they've got, you know, widgets from other services that they're adding. You know, they're doing all sorts of things with that. If that's what you're looking for, 
you're going to be disappointed with the Seesaw blog. We're not trying to be a general purpose website tool. It's really about giving folks an audience, uh, giving kids a more public audience for their work. And, and if, and uh, kind of a, to, to jump off of what you're saying there with uh, connecting, connecting to another classroom, uh, you know, you can look for class blogs that are not just within your school or your school district. You, you know, you may, uh, you know, jump on Twitter or jump on Facebook and, and say, hey, you know, my class blog is here and we're looking for a little bit bigger audience. Here's my link. Let, let's let's connect our, our classes that way. Uh, there's a lot of ways that I think teachers can find other class blogs to, to really build that authentic audience for each other. Uh, so, Carl, thank you so much for your time today. Uh, any last uh, last words about digital portfolios that you want to want to leave uh, the audience with? I think uh, I think the only last thing I'd add is just you know don't be afraid to to let your students really own that space. I think you know one of the things we've really focused on with with Seesaw is empowering students to manage and, and as you say, you know, like select and curate what goes into their digital portfolio. And that sense of ownership and involvement is so much greater when it's students, you know, doing that on their own. And we've really tried to build everything into Seesaw to make that safe for teachers so they can, you know, approve work before it's shared. But, um, but you know, I think the magic of Seesaw is really when students feel like it's their own. And that's, that's where we see Seesaw really stand out. Cool. Great. So, so for folks who haven't tried Seesaw yet, if you want to get started, you can go to seesaw.me. Uh, there are lots of video tutorials available on YouTube about how to get started, including on the Seesaw channel, uh, as well as on my own YouTube channel. You can find all kinds of uh, getting started tips and tricks, and it's really quite easy to get started. Uh, so thanks, Carl. And uh, everyone, go to seesaw.me, check it out, make a great digital portfolio. It's uh, getting up to... Uh, parent-teacher conference time. So this is a great time to, uh, to, to get started on that. So thanks. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Richard.